morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel and another episode of the Supercoach Diaries. Before we get underway, before we start, do me a favour, hit that like button so I know that you're liking this series and supporting this series, and please drop a subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. With that out of the way, let's look at how our team went this week. So, this week we had a pretty solid week. 2,290 points. While I wasn't to win all my league games, I was actually really, really happy with that score. Now, I've, it's no secret that if you go back through my past episodes, I've really been struggling the past couple of weeks. But I finally feel like I've turned a corner and starting to put some consistent games together. Overall, I'm ranked 37,524th, which isn't amazing, but from compared to where I was earlier in the season, it's starting to bring that rank down. As you can see, I changed, I went up 1,300-ish in rank, so I'm starting to move in the right direction, and my average score is starting to get up there a bit. If I go as well as the, uh, as the predicted score this week, that average score is bound to go up. Without any further ado, let's have a look at the team, the changes I've made, and how I'm looking heading into next round. This is the team I'm looking to be using this round. Now there are a couple of changes that I might need to make depending on injuries. As you can see, right in the middle there with that red and white circle next to his name is Tom Liberatore. Now he did some internal damage to himself two weeks ago, didn't play last week against the Suns, but there is, there's positivity around that he might come back this week. So I haven't traded him out yet. Depending if he, if he plays this week, I'll, um, I'll keep him around. If he doesn't play this week, we'll see what happens. But the other two changes I made was, as you can see over here on the bench for my midfielders, that stalwart that was uh, Ryan Davis, who's done an amazing job throughout the season for us, made a lot of money and been a decent scorer when I've asked him to be has been traded out and I brought in uh, Clark from North Melbourne, who's a young player, he's playing a few games, so he's made us that money, but also if I have an injury on my bench, a surprise injury um, laden uh, before the teams are selected, he's able to come in and he's able to fill a spot. With that money that I made from trading Davis out, I was able to upgrade Kerridge, who again has been an absolutely amazing signing from the start. He's made us a lot of money, he scored some pretty good scores too, and I've traded him out for Dustin Martin. Now, Martin's been the in-form player of the past couple of months. So I've got him in there. He's, he was very expensive, but I'm thinking he's going to be performing towards the end of the season. Uh, so that leaves me with two trades left and 95000 to spend. Now, because I've got five rounds to get through, but only two trades left. This is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to play it conservatively. Now, Tom Liberatore is someone that, if I was in a better position, I would probably look to trade him out. But because I've only got two trades left, I sort of have to. If he's able to play and he's on the field, then I'm going to have to leave him. The same thing with Goldstein here, who has been underperforming, whether it's through injury or just through form. I'm going to have to leave him because I don't have the trades left to switch them out and bring in someone else. So while it's a, while I might be minimising my minimising my scoring potential, I'm taking the conservative route just in case I get to the end of the season I have no trades left. So we're going to go, going to keep those two trades. We're going to keep this team. So this team will probably what we're going to be looking at heading into the end of the season, bar some real serious injuries to some of those players. As far as captains this week go. Uh, Dangerfield's always an absolute an absolute chance of being captain, but this week I think Dan Hanabry against Carlton is a much better choice. He had a quiet round last week, and he's been known to score big against teams that are lower than on the ladder. Hanabry seems to struggle against teams that are that are around Sydney's level or above Sydney's level, but below Sydney's level, when he's got a bit more free space in the midfield, Hanabry is all over it. So I'm going to stick with him as my choice for captain. If he doesn't perform, then I'll have Dangerfield as my backup versus Adelaide. As again, it might I, my ideas might change. I might have to switch it around. But at the moment, that's what I'm looking at. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed another episode of the Super Coach Diaries. I'm getting towards the pointy end of the season. I've got to make sure I'm getting my league wins, getting into the final positions for the league. 
putting myself in the right position to win my two leagues. As I said at the start, like this video if you did enjoy, subscribe to follow all the rest of Supercoach Diaries, as well as the other series I do on this channel. Do leave me a comment below. How many trades do you have left? Do you have enough trades to change your team a fair bit, or are you down to the final few trades like me? Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.